physical quantity is any attributes, right? Any properties of me which you can quantify by, by measurement. For example, height. You can find my height. Height. So what is my height? If you use the ruler, my height is 1.7 meter. Okay. So what is the order of magnitude if I ask? Order of magnitude is 0. Why is that? Because order of magnitude is A times 10 raised to B. A is 1.7 times 10 raised to 0. So order of magnitude is simply power of uh, 10. So order of magnitude is 0. Physical quantity for the height is of course the length. As a unit for the height is of course meter. There are two types of physical quantity in the universe. Fundamental and one is derived. There are seven a fundamental physical quantity in the universe. Seven infinite derived physical quantity. So what is the SI unit for length? When you measure my height, I am 5 feet 7 inches. 5 feet 7 inches is not SI unit. So what is the SI unit? SI unit is I am actually 170 centimeter. 170 centimeter, centimeter is not SI unit. So what is the SI unit? SI unit is meter for the length. The SI unit for the length is meter, right? We're going to write the dimension. What is the dimension symbol? L. Is in the square bracket. What is uh, the SI unit for mass? Kilogram. And what is the dimension symbol? M. All right. After mass, you're going to write time. What is the SI unit for time? Second. Okay. What is the dimension symbol? T. The SI unit for temperature? Of course, uh, Kelvin. And the dimensional symbol is theta, current. Current. SI unit is ampere and dimensional symbol is I, amount of substance. And the dimensional symbol is N, luminous intensity. What is the SI unit? SI unit should be CD, candela, and the dimensional symbol is J. Quantity, there are two types. Of course, the scalar versus vectors. Okay, the scalar give you one information. Vector give you two information. The scalar give you magnitude, vector give you magnitude plus direction. Length can be a scalar and length can be vector. So what is a length when we are talking about a scalar? The scalar version of the length is distance. The vector version of the length is, of course, displacement. How do we know that distance and displacement both are length? Distance measured in meter, displacement measured in meter. That makes both length because length as in meter. So there are infinite number of derived quantity. One of the derived quantity would be A4 paper and I ask you to find the land, that's fundamental quantity. If I ask you to find area, you have to measure the land twice. So that area is a length is square. The SI unit is meter is square. It's no longer meter. So it's not fundamental anymore, it's derived because you have to use a fundamental unit more than once. That is what we call derived quantity. So volume is L cube, which is cubic meter. This is just one narrow example. Uh, the other example would be, what about velocity? Velocity, length over time. What type of length? The length, neither is scalar nor vector. You have to be more specific. So length is displacement. Displacement over time. Time is always a scalar without any exception. Good. One more thing. When you write the displacement, you write the D and there is arrow on the top. When you write the velocity, you write the V, you put the arrow on the top. That makes it vector. When you have arrow on the top, that is what we call vector. Here, I have a paper and a clipboard. The clipboard is heavier than the paper. Now, you're gonna pause the video all right, and you're going to guess how long it's going to take if I drop this one from one meter above the ground. Meter above the ground. So I'm going to say this is 0 0.5 seconds. That's my intuition. All right, this is going to take 0 0.5 seconds, and I'm dropping it. And I'm going to say this one going to take 0. Point what? I don't know. 0 0.3 seconds. Pretending like I'm a stupid. Okay, now let's see. I'm going to drop both. Okay, 
All right, now you saw this one touch the ground before this one. Does that mean Galileo 1590 when he said heavy object and light object fall at the same rate and touch the ground at the same time? All right, Galileo was right, you were wrong. The Galileo said when he dropped the feather and hammer from the Leaning Tower of Pisa in Italy, 1592, lots of folks saw that. What did they say? See, they saw that heavy object touched the ground before the light object. The hammer touched the ground before feather. But why then? Galileo famously said that they both touched the ground at the same time. Did he lie? No, absolutely not. 400 years later, when David Scott went to the moon, 1973, and he dropped feather and hammer from the same height on the moon, David Scott observed that both touched the ground at the same time on the moon, thus proving that Galilee was right. So what went wrong? How can I create the moon here on the earth? Well, I can create the moon here on the earth by removing the year. Okay, I'm going to remove the year for this guy. So year resistance causes this guy taking forever to hit the ground and this guy really faster. If you can remove the air resistance, heavy object and light object, they fall at the same rate, touch the ground at the same time. How can I create the moon here in the classroom? How do I do that? By removing the air? Of course not. If I remove the air, you're going to kill ourselves. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put the paper on the top of the clipboard and then I'm going to draw it. You saw that they both fall at the same rate, hit the ground at the same time. Who created the moon for this paper? This clipboard created the moon for this paper. You got it? You see, they are falling at the same time. You see, they are falling at the same time. Because this guy created the moon for this folk by removing the air. So as, soon, as long as this fall, it doesn't experience any air resistance. Bingo. Isaac Newton wanted to find the time. Time of what? An object. If you draw it from one meter above the ground, how long does it take to touch the ground? Sir Isaac Newton wanted to find. So you're going to draw it from, from one meter above the ground, right? And how long does it take? We're going to use the dimensional analysis to prove that because Sir Isaac Newton did not have any anything, no equation, no reference level, nothing. Dimensional analysis is very powerful. It gives you what type of exponent you have. It doesn't give you the constant, but it gives you what type of what exponent you have. For example, E equal mc squared. How did Einstein know whether it was a square? How did Einstein know whether it was E equal MC square or E equal MC cube or E equal MC4 or E equal MC5? Dimensional analysis. You want to find the time of the object that's going to fall for one meter and want to find the equation. How many physical quantities involved? Pause the video and write them down. Well, length because it's going to fall for one meter. Mass. Because you're dropping mass. The speed. Because there is a speed. And the gravity. Because gravity pulling it down. Now, wait a minute. There is no mass. We just proved a few seconds ago. The mass doesn't matter. Everything falls at the same rate. And the speed is not even constant. Why is that? Because if I drop this from one centimeter above the ground, I will not feel anything, but if I drop it from one meter above the ground, then impact would be different. So speed is not even constant. The speed of a falling body is not constant. So do not treat the speed as constant. The length is constant. And in Newtonian mechanics, we said that one is length and one is time. Absolute length and time, absolute. Velocity is never, velocity is changing. Okay, great. So, the speed is, no, so is T is equal to what? LG. What did Newton know? Newton know left hand side has to equal to right hand side. So, we're going to write alpha 
we're going to write beta. Okay, in the G, how many physical quantities? Well, there are two physical quantities. Okay, what are they? This is, there are two types of acceleration, God made, man made. This is God made, G. So, this is acceleration. Acceleration involves with what? Length. Okay, why? Meter per second is squared. Meter is the SI unit for the length. And second is SI unit for the time. How many? Two. So, meter per second is squared. What does that mean? Acceleration is meter per second per second. One, of course, L A. You're going to say this is, of course, gamma or beta. We use beta. So, this is beta, this is beta. So, L alpha. L beta T negative 2 beta alpha plus beta is equal to 0. Okay, so you're going to say T is equal to T1, T1 is equal to L alpha plus beta T negative 2 B. So alpha times beta is 0. So that L goes to 0 and T negative 2 B. L goes to 0 means L is 1, L goes to 0, L goes to 0 means just 1. So 1 times anything is 1. So now you have 1 is equal to negative 2b. So beta is what? Beta is negative half. Then what is alpha? If beta is 2 half, alpha is minus half is equal to 0. So then alpha is half. Beta is negative 2 half, alpha is half. So what do you want to do now? t1 is equal to t negative 2, beta is negative half. So this this cancel minus minus pass so left hand side is equal to right hand side okay great now how many lines uh, of proof we have we have one line two line three line four line five line six line seven line and eight line who is line going to give you the equation well line number two how the line number two give you equation let's see line number two tells us t one is equal to l alpha g beta what is alpha Alpha is alpha is half. So you're gonna write L half. What is beta? Beta is negative half. So G negative half. So I have the T is equal to L can be written as L. This can be written as G is the square root of L G. All right. Okay, great. Now let's see whether that gives us approximation. This is negative one meter because you draw it, so it's falling. So negative one meter, and this is negative 10 meter per second is squared. So that gives you 0 0.32 uh, second. Now, what is our equation actually? To VAT plus half AT squared. Now, this is displacement. When you drop something, initial velocity is zero. So D is equal to half AT squared, okay, but it's gravity, God made acceleration, so you write ZT squared is equal to displacement. So GT squared is equal to two delta uh, 2 of uh, d. So t is equal to 2d over g. See, they are almost the same. What did I say before? I say that the dimensional analysis do not give you the constant. It does only give you the exponent. See you tomorrow.